All right, after quite a break, we are returning today to Steven Universe Reviews with a review of another issue of the Kaboom Comics series. A series which historically I've had very mixed things to say about. And I'm, I'm going to have mixed things to say about this one today, too. But I liked this one. Probably more than either of the last two. Not only was it just generally a good story, it had a couple of continuity hiccups, but we'll talk about those. They don't really matter that much. Not only was it a generally good story, but it also proves one of my points for me, which I'll get into in a minute, and you guys know how much I love that kind of thing whenever it happens. But first of all, I feel like we actually need to talk about the cover of this one. Jeez, who do I think I am, Linkara? Because, um, <laughs> man, if I had seen this comic on a shelf with this cover and had bought it on the merits of this cover, I would have been kind of mad. Not, not really mad, just kind of mad, which I think most people call annoyed. Is, is that the right word? Annoyed? I would have been annoyed. <laughs> because um, the cover of this one, the last two covers, and I know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are multiple covers for these. Maybe the, the cover in the scan was like a special cover that somebody did or something. But like, the last couple covers on these were like ethereal moments. Like, like stuff that wasn't meant to depict any specific moment from the comic. They were they were just supposed to give kind of a general vibe of, of the kinds of stories we were going to see. And they did a really good job of that. And looking at this cover, which I'm just going to throw up the cover for this video because it's the same thing. You, you can see this chaotic moment. And maybe that is supposed to depict like, like a general vibe of the, of the kinds of stories we would see in the show as well. Because there would be chaotic moments like this in the show. But like... You having fun over there, Klaus? But uh, <laughs> this is the first of these covers that feels like it definitely could be depicting an event from a story that you might see in a comic. And this cover has nothing to do with what's in this comic at all. Seriously, dude, lay down. <laughs> like, it's a decent cover. It's eye-catching enough. But, like, it, it just, it, it's pointless other than that. And I, I don't like that. I think your cover should be true to the book's contents. That said, the main contents of this book are a story called Open Mic, and it focuses on, of all characters, Greg. And you can tell that this is written at a point where they didn't really know where they were going to take the character later. They were just kind of working from impressions of the character at some early point in the story. Because there's a line of dialogue at the end of this story that... It could have been a joke by the characters involved, I guess, technically. But if it wasn't, it speaks to a fundamental misunderstanding of the continuity of this show. And yet I still felt like the story that was told here was very true to Greg's character and spoke to how I felt for a long time he must have felt during everything going on at the rough period in which this comic takes place. And while I do want to talk about this story in relatively decent length, I'm not going to go too in-depth with specific plot points because this is a very visual story. It... it, it tries to capture a vibe more than anything else. And and so I don't want to break it down plot point by plot point. I think that would probably ruin it for anybody who goes to read it later. I just, I just want to say, though, it, it was such an interesting idea to break away from Steven's perspective in this comic and go with Greg's. Because you wouldn't expect Greg to really have anything interesting to do or say. Especially early on, before he started to get involved in the gem stuff in at least the small ways that he did, it really seemed like his life consisted of washing cars at the car wash and then chilling out in his van. But that's what this comic is about, and it's it, it, it's so much more than that while being basically just that. It opens on him getting a picnic ready for himself and Steven. They have plans to go and spend the day together. And though Steven does show up, the gems are seen off in the distance dealing with something. So he runs off to help them, doesn't show up until late, and their day becomes a couple of hours at most before Steven nods off. During all of this, though, Greg ends up stopping off at the Big Donut because he's given the opportunity to do so, and he stumbles upon a flyer for their open mic night, which gives him a bit of a melancholy moment, and he becomes interested in possibly entering. And it ends off with his playing at the open mic night, drawing in the gem creature that the gems were trying to fight because it's attracted to music, and then Steven using music from Greg's guitar to defeat it. Which, if we assume that, that that line of dialogue that I mentioned earlier that it might have been a continuity error was a joke, then this was actually a moment of 
really clever action by Steven, realizing that the creature was attracted to music and fed on music, and that that might mean that it was sensitive to discordant music, he played a purposefully bad note to damage it. Uh, the potential joke I keep mentioning being that Steven uh, mentions that he's still just learning music and then Greg uh, telling him that they're going to start lessons immediately, <laughs> which obviously doesn't line up with continuity because this is clearly after Steven went to live with the Gems, and yet Steven was already an accomplished musician before he went to live with the Gems. We know that for a fact. But I really do think that it was just Greg called him out for playing a terrible note, uh, Steven made a disparaging joke, and then Greg made a joke back that gave him an excuse to spend more time with his son. Because that's really what this whole episode is about. It, it doesn't come out and say any of this. It's just the, the vibe you get from what's happening around Greg as he goes about his day. Because this really is just like, I don't know, I guess the open mic night was on a different day, but it's, it's like two days in the life of Greg Universe. And you get the sense that while he's happy for Steven going off to live with his extended family and learning all these cool things and becoming a superhero, he also really misses him. And, and while he understands that Steven needs to run off to do that, when, when it's important for him to do that, even if it means them missing out on time together, he also resents it. It's very, very clear from some stuff in this comic that he misses Rose a lot, that he's content with the memories he has, but that he also longs for more time with her. And just straight up, that would be kind of how I would summarize this entire story, is it's a story about Greg's longing. He longs to spend more time with his son. He, he longs to understand his son's life better. And while he is happy to have Steven and he is happy to have the life that he has because it means that Steven gets to have the life that he has, Greg also longs for the life that he gave up. He's attracted to that, again, it doesn't say this outright, but it, it's implied that he's attracted to that open mic night specifically because he longs for his past as a musician and wonders what his life might have been if he had continued to pursue that instead of coming back for Rose. And I don't know how much of this is just me reading into this, uh, knowing more about Greg's whole life story from later stuff in the show, and how much of this is intentional, because if that line of dialogue that I keep mentioning wasn't a joke, if that was meant to be correct in the context of this comic, then I can't imagine how somebody could have made that mistake and known some of these things about Greg that they would have had to know to write this into the subtext of this comic. So if this subtext really did come about by accident, that is such a huge coincidence. Though I guess it also could have come about from somebody just really getting Greg's character from what we had seen about him already earlier on in, in, in the show. In which case, that's, that's really brilliant writing. But either way, this is good. Regardless of how brilliant the writing in this actually legitimately is, this is a really solid comic. There are, of course, a couple of mini-comics in here as well. There's one that's a few pages long of Steven and Connie playing in Greg's storage unit, and they have a little play sword fight. It's, it's very cute, but doesn't really amount to anything. There's nothing like... There's no point to it except to be fun, right? And then, like, a mini-mini-comic that's only, like, like, two, maybe three pages long of the gems having to go off and do something on their own. So Garnet gives Steven what appears to be some sort of gem crystal for him to figure out, he thinks. And he drives himself nuts over it, even to the point that he's, like, splayed out on the floor when they get back. But it turns out it was just a toy disco ball that she thought he'd like. And it was very cute. It felt like any given good comedic moment from the show proper. All in all, this is by far the Kaboom comic that I felt the need to talk about the most. I feel like... It's the one that says the most. I actually plan to go reread it once I'm done recording this. Just just to soak up more of that Greg vibe and see if I can pick up on any more subtext, right? And I, I want to point out, I want to say it, I'm going to say it. This comic was only possible because they broke away from the Steven only perspective. Wouldn't it have been so great, guys? If we had gotten some episodes of the show that were like this, because like the answer was kind of like this, even like, like Rose's Scabbard, for example, was definitely still from Steven's perspective, but it's an episode that feels like it's from Pearl's perspective. And, and Log Date, it, it feels like an episode from Peridot's perspective, even though it's technically 
from Steven's perspective, but Steven is always there. His perspective is always a factor in all of this, and it limits what kinds of stories can be told. This story is not such a story. This story can only be told by breaking away from the Stephen Lee perspective. And I'm going to bring it back around to another recent review I made. I recently talked about the show Kid Cosmic on Netflix and how I feel like it blew through some great ideas for some fantastic episodic stories very, very quickly instead of doing anything interesting with those stories using its unique premise. In the same vein as something like that, can you imagine if we had gotten, after several episodes of Steven going off with the gems and doing gem stuff, an episode which took that, which took just the same standard premise as one of those episodes, something we'd seen before in other episodes of Steven Universe, and did something different with it by giving us that story as background dressing to an episode about Greg. In the same vein as how I wanted Kid Cosmic to take some of those tried and true Alien of the Week Invader stories and given us some twist on them, that would have been a great way to give us a unique twist on Steven Universe's Monster of the Week, Gem of the Week storytelling formula, and would have stretched the Gem of the Week premise out longer, which is something that I wanted the show to do, because that was the premise of the show. So while it's great that we get stories like this in the comics, and it certainly justifies these comics being a thing in the first place, even though I still feel like the art really could be better. It's still kind of hard to tell what's going on sometimes in this. It would have been so much cooler if we had gotten stuff like this in the show, which is 100% canon and not just the stage two canon of these comics. Because remember, these comics are only canon until they contradict the continuity of the show. And depending on how you take that line that I keep bringing up, this one may or may not violate the continuity of the show, and therefore this one may or may not be canon. It just bums me out that they had that potential storytelling engine and just never utilized it because they were so wrapped up in keeping their gimmicky perspective thing. It's like I say in my new channel trailer, I will praise a show when it fully realizes its potential, but I will criticize one which squanders it, and I feel like Steven Universe did squander a lot of its potential by never breaking away from Steven's perspective, even for just a couple episodes a season. That said, though, this comic is by far my favorite of the three that I've read so far, and I hope that these comics continue to improve as they go, because they have certainly been getting better as they go, just in general. All of that said, though, as per usual, I'd like to know what do you think of the Kaboom comic Steven Universe open mic, if you have read it. Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below, and while you're down there, you could like the video and share it with anyone else you think might also enjoy my content. Subscribe if you haven't. I'm trying to get myself out there, and I'd really appreciate it if you guys could help. You can also check out my social medias. Links to those will be in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.